Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest podcast. And this is going to be on the evaluation of chest pain and the role of the triple rule out study. The triple rule out study is something that has been somewhat controversial. We know that evaluations of patients with chest pain is indeed very difficult. This article by RAF, Diagnosis and Triage of ED Patients with Suspected Acute Coronary Syndromes, consumes a large and increasing amount of healthcare resources, up to and more than 9 million ED patients with acute uh, coronary symptoms are seen annually in the U.S. with a health cost of over $15 billion. Now, when you ask the question, what can we do for these patients in terms of the ER setting, there are a number of choices. Well, you know, in the old days, uh, treadmill testing, which is never done in the ER setting typically, myocardial perfusion imaging, stress myocardial perfusion imaging, stress echo, and most recently, anatomic imaging by coronary CTA. And as we all know, coronary CTA has made great strides. We've gone from 16 to 64 to 128, 256, 320, and dual energy and dual source type scanners. The ability to scan in a couple seconds has improved our accuracy. In saying that, the numbers are indeed impressive. This article by Raf made the point and this is before even the newest scanners, accuracy of coronary CTA to predict an equal to or greater than 50% stenosis, averaged at over 93% sensitivity, 79% specificity, and an 80% predictive value with a 93% negative predictive value. And these all compared favorably with other studies. And so you recognize this was in the 64 slice era Again, one of the things that RAF, who is also very interested in course and workflow, made the point that coronary CTA resulted in a reduced median length of stay, time to diagnosis, and an increase in direct discharges. There were more major adverse events uh, in the SOC group versus the coronary CTA group within 30 days, but the difference was not significant. So again, coronary CTA provides tremendous opportunity. And this is not a talk about coronary CTA, but we know that as we get better and better, the ability to detect the presence of stenosis, in this case 70%, we're able to do the studies with beta blockers, we're able to do patients even with high heart rates with some of the newer scanners, and here's an example of right coronary artery occlusion, and here it is as we do some of the segmented views through the right coronary. So we know about the strengths of coronary CTA. We also know the ability not only to look at stenosis, but to to look at other problems. For example, anomalous origin of coronary vessels in a patient with chest pain. Here's what would be considered a malignant configuration with an anomalous origin of the right coronary from the left cusp, tracking between the ascending aorta and pulmonary outflow track. And you can see the uh, area of narrowing and compression. You could just imagine this patient's symptoms. uh, It's interesting that when you go back a couple years, one of the things that people noticed was that coronary CTA had probably not taken off as fast as it should. And it was always surprising because when you have chest pain, of course, coronaries is one thing, but at the same time we look at chest pain from coronary artery disease, we can look at the aorta, we can look at the pulmonary arteries, pneumothorax, pericardial disease, pleural disease, and the lung parenchyma. So one of the things you recognize is that CT, unlike the other studies, is not just only the coronary arteries. We get so much more beyond the heart. And people recognize early on that sometimes you would make a diagnosis, like in this case of a pulmonary embolism in the patient's right lower lung pulmonary arteries, when you were really looking at the coronary arteries. And so when you think about that, you then recognize that perhaps we can do one study that answers all of the questions. And that would be a triple rule out study. And if you think about it for a second, that would be ideal. In the ER setting, when time is critical, when costs are critical, when dose is critical, you wanna do one study that answers all of the questions and that would give you that triple rule out. And what would we do? We would look for a study that defines coronary artery stenosis of over 50% the presence or absence of aortic dissection, and the presence or absence of pulmonary embolism. And when you think about it, what you're really looking at is what can we do to facilitate the safe discharge of patients judged to be of low to intermediate risk. 
So really what you're trying to find, remember with cardiac CT, one of its biggest advantages is the 99% negative predictive value. If a patient has severe chest pain, elevated enzymes, and you know the patient has definite coronary artery disease or high suspicion, you're going to cath. But two-thirds of patients who go to cath have a normal cath. So we're really trying to provide a easy, non-invasive, cost-effective technique to really streamline our process. And again, this article is from 2009. Triple rule out, CTA can provide cost-effective evaluation of the coronary arteries, aorta, pulmonary arteries, and adjacent thoracic structures for acute chest pain. It's most appropriate for the patient who is judged to be at low to intermediate risk for acute coronary syndrome and whose symptoms may also be attributable to acute pathologic conditions of the aorta of pulmonary arteries. So again, it's this idea of managing the patient. Another article, Grudner, coronary CTA and triple rule out allow a rapid and safe discharge in the majority of patients presenting with acute chest pain and an intermediate risk for acute coronary syndrome while at the same time identifying those with coronary artery stenosis. Again, the best of both worlds. Now, in this article on the triple rule out, Gertner also makes the point, based on a negative coronary CTA, 60 of 100 patients were discharged on the same day, and none of these patients showed MACE during the 90-day follow-up. Coronary CTA revealed a stenosis of over 50% 50 in 19 of the 100 patients, and this was confirmed um, with IVIS in 17 of the patients. Among the 17 true positive, nine underwent percutaneous coronary intervention with stent implantation, seven received intensified medical therapy, and one underwent bypass. And you could see in that same article, uh, the triple rule up protocol, 36 of the 100 patients had elevated D-dimers, while only five of them had a pulmonary embolism but there are other findings noted as well. And so when you look at this entire article, and this was the impact on patient management, coronary CTA and triple rule out allow a rapid and safe discharge in the majority of patients presenting with acute chest pain. Okay, again, intermediate risk for acute coronary syndrome is the population you're looking at. And when you look at it, not just from an impact on patient management, but part two of his article was looking at the economics, Integrating coronary CTA uh, for the work of a patient with acute chest pain and intermediate risk can reduce the number of hospitalized patients while at the same time reducing overall healthcare costs. And again, one of the big things about CTA is that we think it can reduce cost. And this article does make that point. Uh, Dr. Curry from Miami uh, made the point that triple rule out should be considered um, if an additional suspicion of PE or aortic uh, dissection is present. Again, 64 slice CT are better. We know that. There's some additional radiation with a triple rule out, but in the right population, it's indeed the thing to do. In his article, uh, based on his experience uh, in triaging patients, chest pain patients with negative or mild non obstructive coronary disease uh, can be safely discharged from the ED without further testing. A dedicated chest pain triage protocol is critical for the success of a coronary CTA program. Now, there have been other articles. This article by Urbania was somewhat, I won't say the word was controversial or was critical of triple rule out, but remember this is 2009, which is a lifetime ago, and their concern was perhaps you wouldn't be getting the best study. And a 64 slice, it's hard to get a good triple rule out. It's hard to get something that shows you the coronaries as well as the aorta and pulmonary arteries, especially since the aorta and coronaries is the same timing, but the pulmonary arteries opacify significantly earlier, probably 8 to 10 seconds. And so it is indeed a challenge when you're not scanning fast enough, perhaps. And in this article, uh, Urbana made the point that perhaps you need to figure out a little bit better clinical judgment to figure out uh, that you don't need a triple rule out. You need to get either a PE study or a dissection study or a coronary study. Now, of course, that's kind of, you know, in theory, a good thing. And remember, I know in our practice, a triple rule out 
is done infrequently. We do a couple a day, but we do far more coronary CTAs. So again, if you were doing triple rule out on everybody, you probably weren't triaging your patients correctly. So there probably is a right number. Maybe it's 10 to 20% of all the coronary studies. It should not be obviously 100%. Now, in this article by ARM, they were also somewhat critical about triple rule outs. Now, in part, the reason they were critical was they were looking at articles that were published to evaluate non traumatic chest pain and doing this obviously triple rule out study. They spoke about 11 studies, 3,500 plus patients. There was no significant difference in image quality between triple rule out and dedicated CT scans. Triple rule had the following pool diagnostic accuracies for coronary artery disease, which are well over 90%. So what ARM said was, okay, the triple rule outs were good quality studies, and the coronaries were great studies. But if you ask the question, is the triple rule out good for PE or dissection, when you looked at the articles that were published, there were very few patients that actually had aortic aneurysm or dissection, or pulmonary embolism, and so it was very, very hard to make any determinants as to the quality of that component of the exam. They did make the point that triple rule outs do cover more area and so do require additional radiation compared to a single coronary CTA. So his conclusion was triple rule out is highly accurate for detecting coronary artery disease. Given the low prevalence of PE and aortic dissection in the included studies, and the increased radiation and contrast exposure, there are insufficient data to recommend use of triple rule out in the diagnosis of these conditions. And in some ways, it's a good point when you do look at the data. Of course, even in our experience, we were discussing this in conference the other day, it's rare for us to see a dissection or a P in a triple rule out. We do see it, but it's not 40%. It's well under 10%. Now, in that academic emergency medicine uh, journal, Courtney said, it appears that much of the decision on ordering and non-ordering a triple rule out, a coronary CT will be for the moment guided and perhaps limited by non-research based factors, technical availability to obtain interpret images, hospital willingness to provide this imaging, and the patient's willingness to pay for it. That was somewhat negative. Now, he did say that it's unlikely that the future of course containment at the level of the uh, insurer or hospital will support an expanding role of triple rule out without additional evidence that it improves disease detection and preserves health in some quantifiable way. Now you, can, you can't really argue with that statement. We think that it does provide an advance for patients and there are new articles that do make that point. Again, in terms of some uh, criticism with triple rule out, this article by Ripley in one large series of more than 2,000 CT scans, no diagnosis of aortic dissection was made, and in those presenting to an emergency department with acute chest pain, P and dissection combined amounted to only 0.2% of diagnoses. So again, very, very important to really uh, think about that. And again, his point, triple rule outs result in a high exposure to ionizing radiation with no confirmed clinical benefit. Advanced imaging techniques should not be used to support clinical decision making, not instead of it. To paraphrase the BMG series by Spence, perhaps it's a case of bad medicine rather than too much medicine. So there is some controversy, but I think the controversy with time is dying down as the doses become lower, as we have more experience. So the question is, can you do a triple rule out? And maybe the answer is yes, you can, but the real answer is whether you should be doing it and in what selection process. And again, there are some parameters. I showed you a moment ago the article by Gerdner. And just to reinforce, patients presenting with acute chest pain and an intermediate risk for ACS, while at the same time, uh, we're not certain exactly if it's just simply coronary disease. It's this acute chest syndrome. And so what's going on? And in this article by Gertner, here's his chart. Patients with acute chest pain who did not fulfill any of the below criteria listed were considered as low risk patients. So you want intermediate risk patients. Uh, he goes on a bit further. Current data shows that in intermediate or low risk patients, this method is suitable to rule out coronary artery disease. In addition, 
attention is paid to major differential diagnosis, particularly PE and dissection. Okay, so again, the idea of triple rule out, and again, here's a chart comparing high risk, intermediate, and low risk, with the intermediate risk being the patient population with triple rule outs will work. Low risk patients should not be getting triple rule out. So that's kind of some of the theory. That's some of the controversy. The question then is, let's say you assume in your hospital that you want to do triple rule outs. The clinicians want you to do them. There's an understanding of selection of patients for triple rule out. Again, be careful about patient's age. Be careful about radiation exposure. Make sure you have expertise in acquiring the data, that you can do it well. Make sure you have those fast scanners. So what is the challenge? Is there a technical challenge compared versus a coronary CTA? That's a good question. And for that question, we're going to come back in a couple of moments and address it very carefully. See you in a bit.